Hey y'all, coming to you from the International Headquarters of Scotty DTV, but I was down at Bryce Thomas Radiator, and I was talking to Chris about uh, the old copper brass radiators, the way they used to make them old school, and uh, Bryce Thomas still does that. They'll uh, either fix yours or make you a new one, whichever you need, and the process of making them is a little bit different than the aluminum one. I thought you might find it interesting, so anyways, let me get the camera turned around. We'll take a quick look at it. Chris, what's the procedure for building a copper brass radiator? Well, we start out with our raw materials flat fin coal, uh, copper coal, and then our brass solder coated tubes. The um, tubes come in a full length tube, we cut them down to the specific length for that particular job. Uh, today we're going to be looking at how a uh, GM crossflow radiator core is built. Uh, GM used these radiators from the late 60s into the early 90s on uh, trucks, cars, almost everything they built. Um, here we've got the uh, the fin uh, material running on the fin machine. We program that machine to, to run a certain number of fins a certain length, and as we um, as it comes off, we'll we'll stack them up in a box. The uh, copper fin is a little more delicate than the aluminum fin, so we stack that in a box. And as you can see here, Beverly's building this this core. She started with the um, with the side plates. She puts a brazing foil down that helps the first row of fin to bind to the uh, side plate. Then she'll put another foil, uh, brazing foil down. In these radiators, the outside corners are the weak point. They, uh, so we put that additional foil in there just to get a good contact joint uh, to the fin to help strengthen the corners of that. So as she stacks this core out, once she gets to the last fin, she'll repeat the same process with the foil, side plate, and then strap it down. Now it's ready to, uh, to be headered. We, uh, we punch our headers out on a turf press. That gives us our tube slot, our tube spacing. And I know Bryce Thomas has been keeping cool cool since 1950-something. People want to follow you or get in touch with you, see your product. What's the best way to do that? You can check us out online, uh, cgj.com. You can follow us on our Facebook page, Bryce Thomas Radiator. And come see us at a show. Chris is, Chris is at a lot of the big shows, folks, and they usually have a booth, and they're always good people to stop by and see And then Wade will take that and form the drop seam in it, put the radius in it. That way, when the original tanks go back on this core, the stamp tanks have radius corners. That way, everything fits down in that channel. Real nice. We get a good solid braze, uh, solder joint in that, so that solder's actually coming around the backside and kind of doubling that joint. That up. Um, here he is um, straightening the fin. Uh, uh, to give it a nice even uh, line at the header joint and also straightening the tube so that when he goes to put his his header on all the tubes line up into the tube slot after he seats this this header onto the uh, onto the radiator he'll take that and roll the tubes on that what that's doing the tubes have a have a tendency to want to close off a little bit as they come through the the header the rolling this um, these tubes on that actually opens that kind of swedge fits it it opens that tube back up so that it gets a good contact joint with the brass now it's not necessarily in this step once it cooks in the oven it's not necessarily fully uh, being soldered there but it does help the header to stay in place after that uh, once now here we have a uh, fully assembled header core ready to go and, uh, and bake. First it goes through a flux bath. All that does is it helps all the solder to run over the joints so that the fin to tube contact is, uh, is, is fully connected with the, uh, to the tube using the solder. Uh, we load it on the drawer to the oven. Cooks for about three minutes at 600 degrees. When it comes out, we let it cool down. Then we dip the headers into a solder pot. There's two ways to do that. Uh, the old school way to do that is with a roll of solder and a torch. And it takes a long time to do that. Here we have a, a solder pot that has melted solder ready to be 
adhered or placed onto the um, to, to seal the, the tube to header slots. And it's doing both sides at one time, uh, both top and bottom of the header at one time. That gives it just additional strength. Uh, you would still do that kind of the old school way by hand. This just allows it to do it in seconds rather than, you know, 30 minutes. So we do both sides of that. The, um, you'll see they'll, once they pull it out of the solder pot, they'll blow the excess solder through the tubes that clears the tube. Then they'll brush that. That will um, just, just sweep away any excess solder that's on there, uh, keeping the, the tubes free and clear. After it is soldered, it'll, it'll go for a, uh, for a bubble test. Uh, kind of twofold here. We'll, using soapy water, kind of scrub any additional solder that may have kind of bubbled up or, or solidified on the header. We'll use a steel brush and just sweep that away. While that soapy water is on there, we do an initial leak test on it, blowing the, uh, the air underneath the header. Pretty simple way of doing this, but it's very effective. We're looking for bubbles on the top side of that. We'll, if we see any, we'll address that there. After that, we, it goes to a, to a final watch and nameplate, warranty numbers put on it, and it's ready to go to uh, either our radiator shop or one of our customers' radiator shops to be uh, to recore an existing radiator there. Well, brother, again, you know I always appreciate coming out here and spending time with you and getting educated on what keeps cool cool. And uh, thanks so much for your time today, Chris. Thanks, Scotty. Appreciate it. Hey, y'all, make sure you subscribe to this channel and visit scottydtv.com for an easy way to search the hundreds of videos I have posted. Either click the link in the description or the one at the end of this video.